Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi, Hi, everyone. Howdy. It's uh, me, Nigel, and of course. Oh, Heather. Me. Heather. Heather. <laughs> Um, I wanted to apologize right up front. I, I thought I had a lot of extra time today and I was like, that's weird. I thought maybe it's just because I didn't put makeup or hair on, which does take a lot of time um, off my plate. But I forgot to send out a newsletter about this. So if you are caught off guard <laughs> that uh, we started a live stream, my apologies. And if you miss any of it, you can catch it on the replay. Mm. So go ahead, Nigel. I just wanted to get that out of the way. <laughs> All righty. Well, that's, uh, that's us introduced. Most of us probably, uh, most of our viewers probably already know us already. <laughs> um Kathleen Ryan, first on the first out of the gate. Hi everyone. Hi Kathleen. Hi Kathleen. Sheila says hi Kathleen. Been waiting here a while. Hi Sheila. Jamie says, hey, look, I'm early and in PJs. Excellent. Hi, Jamie. I've got PJs on too. That was not a front. I'm wearing this is my good leg, by the way. I'm wearing cat party pajamas and they're fuzzy. That that was truth and advertising there. <laughs> I've got my royal blue and black gingham flannel. Uh, pajamas and, and a this powerful, powerful shirt, and this extremely nineteen seventies Van Art T shirt my mother in law gave me. That does look like Van Art. Oh my god, with the bubble windows. No, I just need a bubble window up here somewhere. <laughs> That's fantastic. Kathleen says, "Just watched my daughter's live stream, and now Heather's lol. Oh, excellent! Wow, yay! That sounds like a really nice night in." Cheryl says, hi, everybody. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. Uh, she asked what the live stream was about. Faye <laughs> Ray Hudsmith. Hi, friends. Hi, Faye hi. Ray. Uh, Kathleen's daughter did a nail tutorial. That's so cool. I'm, yeah. I'm going to do my nails after, after today's stream, but it takes me a freaking eternity because I do acrylics. But if that's what she does, or if she does like, uh, any of the uh, SNS stuff? That stuff's crazy. Like, I still want to know more about that. If you've ever had SNS, let me know. Which oh, I see Faith is in with us. Hi, Faith. Yeah. And Terry. Yeah. Who else? Uh, Barbara says hello to you and everybody. Hi. Hello. Ava says good evening, everyone. Hi, Ava. Hello. KP, hello. KP. Hello. Oh, that's, that's a fun profile picture. Hi, Terry. Hi, Terry. Hello, everyone. Hi. Ooh, I love that pixie on you. I have a difficult time pulling off pixies sometimes because I got a little extra here and I get kind of, you know, I get a little self-conscious about it. You look fantastic. Mm. <laughs> Let's see who else we got. Uh, okay, Faith, you covered Faith. Yes. Excellent. Deborah says, hi, hi. <laughs> it, 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 it jumped again. Uh, bloody thing jump. Where is it? Where'd it go? Debra. There we go. Hello, says Debra. I see Julie. Hi, Debra. No, this is like romper room. I see Julie and Bettina. <laughs> Hello, by the way. Oh, yes. Hola. Just finished listening to Mick Martin's Blues Party. Oh, love Ooh. a bit of blues music. Love a bit of blues music. And jazz and all sorts of stuff like that. Ah, oh, marvelous, marvelous, marvelous. Okay, we're not going to do the usual. Our live streams are usually tipsy because they're not tipsy today because yeah. Heather and I are both on medication. Yeah. Uh, we, can't, we can't be tipsy tonight. Um, but uh, so tonight's drink of the week is actually, where'd it go? Oh, bugger, I forgot to bring the tin up. It's Turvis tumble, Tumbler. They have such pretty girly Turvis Tumblers. I forgot to bring the bloody tea up. Oh, well. <laughs> I, I would get it, but I would have to hobble. <laughs> no, that's okay. I'll I'll just show the the company. This is the the Republic of Tea. There we go. They they do marvelous round tea bags. What? I believe that I actually put the name of the tea in the description of the video already. Good. Well, it's already up, up there. So I just oh, want to show. Me, I just want to show the tin. Oh, cool! But, cool. Uh, these these Republic of Tea people are very good at doing tea, both regular and decaffeinated this is another good one red velvet chocolate oh that's good that one's really good yeah but anyway so that's what we're doing we got uh two of the tea bags in one of these big turvis tumblers lots of hot water a couple sweeteners and some uh sugar-free vanilla creamer 
and that works nicely. I must oh, say. it's great. It's super good. It's, it's got such a strong raspberry flavor and it goes really well with the hibiscus. Yeah. I'm very happy with, with all the weird teas that I bought this last week. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. What do we got here? It's me, Susie. That pixie was my bio hair quite a few years ago. Oh, oh. wow. You look fantastic in short hair. Mm. Helen Green Kirk, happy PJ night. Hello, Helen. Oh, we hope you we hope you are comfy as well. And says, hello all. SNS nails are wonderful, by the way. Hello. Thank you for the feedback. Cause I, I've been curious about that. I've been thinking of switching because the acrylics, you know, they kind of make your, your nails like paper after a while. <laughs> synchronized tea drinking barbara says countdown to black friday y'all oh yeah we're well I aware know, of that. I, I am both excited and terrified <laughs> i hope that it goes really really well yeah well say. <laughs> uh, jamie says it's okay i can be tipsy for you both here here and Bere says we'll be tipsy in your honor Excellent. you guys are doing the lord's work thank you <laughs> Tina, every Saturday from 1 to 3 PST on Capital Public Radio for the for the blues. Excellent. That nice. sounds great. Susan Ferguson says hi. Hi, hello. Susan. Let's see who else we got. Sarah, yay, I caught you guys live. Hello from New Zealand. Hello. hello. You know, it's funny. We were just watching um, a Clint's Reptiles video about when he went to New Zealand in New Way and uh, got to see Kiwis and Tuataras and all sorts of fantastic things and and rare rare creatures fantastic so very timely excellent yes definitely try this stuff it's bloody good it's really really good in fact i bought a whole bunch of flavors because um i'm trying to drink caffeine early in the day and not all day long which is tough for me because i'm really seriously and very cliche addicted to caffeine <laughs> Um, but I've been trying to switch to herbal tea to see if I can kind of gently wean myself off of it with flavor. And so far, this is going very nicely. Mm, that's bloody delicious. Uh, Cheryl says, what's the name of the creamer? Oh, it's just, you know, the um, Nestle, what is it called? The the French vanilla sugar -free vanilla sugar -free 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 The thing is that we were, we try to find a flavor that isn't Nestle. That's like, and it's like they don't carry it in most no. of the grocery stores around us. It's, we get one option. <laughs> yeah, we get that's that's our choice. One non dairy, because we tried making this with real cream and that did not work. It, it curdled. curdled. It curdled like crazy. But yeah, raspberry rose hibiscus, bloody good stuff. Oh, it's amazing. And and I looked at the recipe for the tea in the tea bag. What it says the ingredients are. There's actually a little bit of stevia in it. So mm. you don't have to add sweetener. It, it, it doesn't have like a lot of sweetener in it. I think they add it just to kind of keep the fruit flavor really nice and bright, but I don't taste stevia in it. Mm. And, um, you know, and if you use it even, even a little bit too much, it has kind of like a minty aftertaste kind of. Yeah. I mean, have you noticed that, Nigel? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Especially when I, when I had, um, when they brought over Coke Life over in the UK and then stopped selling it. Um, mm. That I noticed that it had a sort of minty, minty taste. And I quite like mint, so, you know. Yeah, I like it, too. It. I like stevia in most things. And some things where mint flavor wouldn't go well. Yeah. It's like Splenda time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, go back to comments. Uh, Tina says, what is SNS? Good, because I was wondering that myself. It's like, oh, I don't remember what the first S is, but it's like synthetic nail system or something like that. So, mm. Something nail system. I know. I know the N and the S is nail system, mm. but I don't remember what the what the first one is for. Kathleen says my daughter only works in gel. Gel is very very cool though because they get so many interesting color options, and it and the way it cures is so much faster than sitting there going, "Is it done yet? Is it done yeah. yet?" And then it smudges anyway. <laughs> Rishi teas and Taylors of Harrogate have awesome flavors. We've we've got some Taylors of Harrogate. I'm sure we have. Yeah, we do. I think I think we do. Um, I don't remember which one it is. I'll have to check it out. I was planning on reorganizing my teas because it's gotten a little crazy. You know that scene in uh, um, Scott Pilgrim versus the World where Mona Flowers is rattling off all of her tea? That is me. I have so yes. many teas and I'm constantly buying more. It's really yes. ridiculous. It's to the point where um, I have to figure out where to put some of them now because they're sort of overflowing onto the countertop. 
I have to trick myself into drinking water, Nigel. I am not a fan. I would much rather drink cat coffee <laughs> with more coffee and a side of coffee. It's it's really bad. I think part of it's just because after I lost weight, my metabolism slowed way down. Mm -hmm. And now when I drink coffee, it's like, <gasps> I'm normal again. I'm no longer like, what my temperature, like, because I just had surgery and like there was a lot of pre-op and stuff, which we'll get to in a, in a moment or two. But uh like my temperature has been low. My blood pressure has been kind of low because my metabolism is just, it's like in the gutter. And because I've been not moving around a whole lot the last uh, couple of weeks, it's just, I've just wanted an IV of coffee like 24 <laughs> seven, it's not healthy. So I need the tea, Nigel, because it's like, it's like- You don't have to sell an Englishman oh, yes. on tea. Yeah, you're English. You don't have to sell me on the notion of tea. How could I forget? That's that's like almost disrespectful of your heritage. My bad. <laughs> uh, Jamie says, oh, I love Clint's reptiles. I own four myself. I remember you talking about at least one of them, but wh which which reptiles do you have? Because I'm fascinated by, by any anything like that. Well, any animal, really. I'm a biologist by trade, but... Uh. Let it's us, adorable. Let, let, us know, let us know in the in the comments over here. The uh, have you tried the kiss impress press on nails? They are awesome. No, but oh, I've not heard of those. That's something to take note of. They have to be faster than doing a full acrylic set. Mm. <laughs> that takes an eternity. You kind of forget when you have somebody do it for you how time yeah. consuming it would be if you were doing it all one hand at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Oi, oi. <laughs> Barbara says, I can't like tea. I've tried and I've tried. I feel like I'm missing out, but I'll settle for cocoa. Well, cocoa's nice. Cocoa's very nice. Solid, solid. The thing is, this doesn't really taste like tea. This tastes like fruit and flowers and sweetness. And It's, it's a lie. Amazing. There's no tea in it. <laughs> it's it's like what you would call in England a tazan or something like that. Tazan. 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 Interesting. Tina says, I have salted caramel celestial seasons. We just got a, a, a caramel ruibos, didn't we, from somewhere? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good flavors all around. Oh, yeah. Mm. Jackie says, hi, everyone. So glad to see how you are, Heather, and to have this pajama party. It's so cold here. I'm under a blanket and ready to drink hot cocoa with brandy. Another vote for cocoa. But this yes. time, Coco Plus. Coco <laughs> with brandy. Yeah, get some of that Asbach inside it. Yes, yes. chocolate and Asbach. Speaking of that, I literally just got the calendar, the catalogs that yeah. the, too. I got the European deli one and the Swiss holiday because I am such a bad influence at Christmas. I love pushing boozy chocolate on people. <laughs> and I love having boozy chocolate pushed upon me. Oh, and they have so many options, and they have so many different candies that have Osbach brandy in them. Oh, yes. Mm. Oh, God. Maybe I should, I've been thinking about that. I was like, maybe I should just, like, for for a lark, a spree, you know, buy some of this candy and maybe give it away to people during Christmas or something. Maybe, you know, do, like, a mm. contest or something. I don't know. I don't know. I just thought it'd be cute, you know, mm. particularly people like boozy, chocolatey things. That sounds like <laughs> Because I, I love pushing these things on people. They're so special because it's not like you can get them in stores. Yeah. Faye says, I hope your recovery is going well, Heather. And Nigel, yes to tea? Yes, it's going quite well. I've got photographic evidence <laughs> of what transpired. We'll get it's, to that later, folks. Yes. When, when do you want to start that part, honey? Very shortly. Okay. Get through, get through a few more comments here. Anne says, I don't recall what the SNS stands for either. You dip your nail in colored powder. My nails are very thin and rip easily. The SNS Same. powder is long lasting and makes the nail strong. Hmm. Ah. Check that out. Jamie says, bearded dragon and three coal pythons. I take it you mean a ball python? Never heard of a coal python before. We also got an axolotl recently. That's axolotl. so cool. Axolotls are so cool. And beardies are so nice. Oh, yes. I made the rookie error when I was younger and I tried to rescue an iguana. Luckily, I was able to find somebody who had experience with iguanas to take it on um, because it was it put me way over my head. Iguanas have attitudes, <laughs> but yeah. beardies are, are pretty easy going. Mm. I, I don't they're know. Maybe gamids, maybe. if I recall correctly. What's that? Say they're gamids, if I recall correctly. Which like ones? Gama lizards, bearded dragons. Oh, I might be misremembering. I do know that axolotl is Nahuatl for water monster, though. 
<laughs> they're funny looking. They're cute. You're like, I love. <laughs> I know that's going to end up being used in a video by somebody that doesn't like me. I'll do it again. I'll make it easier. Yeah. Uh, but they have that fun little fringe on the sides of their faces. You know what I mean? Is those it... droopy stuff. <laughs> they're so fun. Uh, Barbara says, I must have been thinking of you, Heather, when I designed a mug that says coffee because I can't mainline caffeine. <laughs> it's such an influencer cliche, but it's absolutely true. And I'm I'm going to blame biology, though. I well, just, I, I, I mean. I've, I've become hooked on caffeine since since I married you, so I blame you. Ah, but it's, it, it's, it's... I blame you. I buy stuff that tastes good. Oh, yeah, you do. So you that makes me. it hard to pass up because it smells fantastic. Uh, Tina says, I don't do coffee. I've always been a tea drinker. I, I, I go both ways. <laughs> Take that out of context as you will. <laughs> Faith uses impress. They are great. Okay, so that's that's something important to know. I will definitely have to try them out, particularly if I don't feel like doing a full set sometime. Ah, Faith says, Ah, Spock, so few know these chalkies, the bestest. They are fantastic. They're pretty damn luscious. They're fantastic. Oh, Tina says, I just bought some jelly bellies at the mall on Thursday. Ooh. I love fruity candy. Love jelly <laughs> bellies. Any particular flavor is your favorite? Me personally, I don't like the um, buttered popcorn. I think they taste more like stale um, cornflakes in milk. But for the most part, every other flavor of <laughs> jelly belly is just magical. I, I'm not going to be as adventurous with those birdies bots though. And we've had this conversation on live stream before, I think, but seriously, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to pay me to try a sardine flavored jelly belly or like skunk spray grass. I would try grass again. That could the be grass. The grass nice. ones are nice. They, they taste exactly like freshly mown grass smells, which is nice. That sounds lovely. Yeah. Yeah. But the, uh, the skunk spray, it honestly, I like it better than the licorice. I like licorice. I like Brock's licorice jelly beans. Oh, those are different, yeah. Because they're so big and juicy. Again, all of this could be taken out of context. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh. Yep, Axolotl is the weirdest thing. Every morning we play dead or alive with him. <laughs> <laughs> Stacy says, I work at a surgery center and the joke that our anesthesiologist should hook us up to a caffeine drip. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Serene sends her regards. Her dad came from a, for an early Thanksgiving visit. Oh. Okay, well, hi, Serene, oh, and thanks for passing that on, Kathleen. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> Buttered popcorn, sizzling cinnamon, and caramel corn. Okay, more for you then, because that's not my bag of, that's not my bag, baby. That's how we we go with the licorice ones. That's more for me. I'm yeah. fine with this. All right, Nigel, are you about ready? Okay, tonight's main topic is the pajama party and a couple other things. So, we're in our pajamas. We showed off our pajamas. There we go. There right. you are. All right. Okay, so, all right. So, as you probably saw, this week's theme is pajama party live stream. I suspect many of you probably watched this in your pajamas anyway, which is great because, I mean, we're joining you today. This is my one good leg that I can almost stretch like that. It's got kitty cats with party hats on. So, you know, and I've also got um, made of star stuff, you know, Carl Sagan quote, repping, nerds. Um, so yeah, tonight we're going to talk about um, the tea, which we already did, and we'll probably mention it again a little bit. Um, also, I'm going to talk about my knee surgery. None of these photos are particularly gruesome. None of them are gory. So it's actually, you know, pretty, pretty safe, uh, even if you're squeamish. Um, and I'm going to go through in excruciating detail some of the recent Patreon perk updates. Um, as my patrons are probably really aware, I've pulled them and asked them at multiple points throughout the year. You know, what do you think if I change the perk system? Should I add this? Should I add that? You know, it's not something that I'm trying to be pesky about, but hopefully um, I've gotten enough feedback that I've managed to cobble together a pretty uh, decent rework here because I wanted to do away with the ones that I thought I was falling short on, on being able to commit on and add more things that I thought that I could work in that um, would be like, I'm not taking stuff away, I'm just giving you more things that I know I can actually provide on a regular basis was more the, the deal. So we're gonna talk about that. And I've also got some funny stuff, like I was playing around and I'm gonna put Nigel back on the camera for a moment in full screen. 
because like this morning I woke him up because I was kind of cackling in bed because I woke up and was playing around oh. Reddit. And then I found somebody who's linking to an app that her friend made called Schlinkedin. And by the way, that might be her friend made this app, you know what I mean? But whatever, it was still funny. And it's called Schlinkedin. And I was playing around with this. And it if you've ever been on LinkedIn, oh my God. Okay, so if you've ever been on LinkedIn, LinkedIn is like Facebook for business people. So it's got like all, of, it didn't used to be like that, by the way. I mean, it was always a, a social network where people would share and try to talk about themselves and stuff like that. But it, it's gotten very Facebooky <laughs> in like the past, like three or four years. And um, you see a lot of people talking about how they overcome obstacles and doing motivational speeches. Well, LinkedIn makes fake versions of these and they are, absolute priceless gems oh yeah heather heather read some out to me and they're just friggin hilarious oh my god so i'm gonna i'm gonna read um them throughout this presentation uh in between the different segments um just just for a laugh they are gonna sound a little singy song singy songy and repetitive and that's because this is a bot so you gotta remember bots aren't really that smart you gotta think they're real stupid and it takes them a while to learn now they learn a lot faster than we do, right? But they have to form a lot, a lot of trees. They got to prune a lot of trees. And then basically they, they take a while. Learning algorithms aren't instantaneous. You have to do thousands of iterations sometimes to get to a point where it actually starts to make sense as, as natural language. So it's, it's actually pretty good. And the more that people contribute to it, the faster to learn. It's not as big, obviously, as something like Twitter or YouTube. And Frankly, it's not as likely to get trolled. So a lot of the stuff that's in there is still kind of genuinely funny and not terrifying. Awesome. Love little independent apps. So I'm going to go ahead and read the first one now. Remember, this is supposed to be a LinkedIn thing. Okay, so story time. When I was young and beautiful, I lived in a planet fitness. We had to fight to survive. I once saw a ghost begging for spare ectoplasm by the subway. Ah, oh, memories. So, well, something even worse happened to me. One day when I was revitalizing my local infrastructure through the power of marketing, a three small children in a trench coat managed to register me as an accredited 501c3. I was left extremely angry. <laughs> but I didn't whine or complain. I didn't even post about it on social media as a desperate bid for attention and with the hopes that some turbulent experience will grant me clout as a thought leader. Not even once. Instead, I figured this would be a good chance to ask three small children in a trench coat, have you employed any digital solutions to improve your labor allocation? I'd love to chat for 10 minutes. That's when I learned to braid hair. When you are faced with hashtag adversity, you need to look inward and outward simultaneously. It's the only way to learn. Thanks to my challenges and my willingness to power through them, I am now in debt. You can do the same too. You just have to believe. Thank you. Hashtag vegan recipes. Hashtag, hashtag chickpea flour. And that's what got, that's what got me, just the... Just the completely random hashtag vegan recipes, hashtag chickpea flour. Uh, I just like they're like, thanks to all of my hard work, blah, blah, blah. I am now in debt. <laughs> True condition. That is a business bot right there. <laughs> Fantastic. Mm. Outstanding. All right. Now I'm going to talk about my knee. Boop. Okay. Go back to the slides. Okay, so a little bit later, I'm gonna discuss changes to Patreon, and I hope that you don't tune out the minute I start talking about it, because I hope that you will think that some of it's pretty cool. Okay, so about my knee surgery, I'm gonna give you a little bit of backstory and a little bit of a, um, a verbal hug in, in, in addition to this, because I feel like there's a lot packed into some of the stuff that I want to say here, and I kind of want to unpack it first and then get to the nitty gritty. So uh, as many of you know, I used to weigh over 270 pounds, and I was that weight for quite a while. I lost over 100 pounds, and I was sleeved in uh, 2017. I've kept it off. Uh, there was a little bit of a rebound, but for the most part, aside from like maybe 15, 20 pounds, I've kept it off. So it's still a 100 pound weight loss. I've never been able to run due to pain in my knees and ankles. 
I thought if I lose weight, this pain will go away and I might be able to learn how to run because it's always been kind of a, a goal. Like whenever I try, I, I hurt immediately. Um, and so I was like roller skating because I could move fast. But, you know, even that I had to be really careful because, I mean, it was painful. Um, well, anyway, I thought that if I lost weight that I, I would feel better and it didn't happen. So the pain persisted. My mobility was still limited. So last year I saw a doctor uh, at, towards the beginning of 2020. So yeah, um, I saw a doctor, started this process, found out um, that I have osteoarthritis in my knees, ankles, and feet. And the thing is this pain has been there since my twenties. It has gotten worse, but it like the, the discomfort and the pain that I've been experiencing has been going on for a long time. And I just always assumed it was just my weight. And that if I lost it, I'd be fine. So I, the other issue is that I can't take NSAIDs too aggressively. And just between you and me, I freaking hate Vicodin. I'm on Vicodin. I'm not on Vicodin right now. Um, today, I haven't needed to take it. And I try to get off them as soon as possible. But aside from the obvious like um, addiction risk, which is nothing to sneeze at, it makes me itchy. And it makes my guts all messed up. I feel all bloaty. And um, it's just not my favorite. We'll, we'll put it that way. So uh, I don't even like taking m most NSAIDs. And in fact, it might even be the, the, the that particular component of the Vikings. It's most of the pill that's actually causing the issue. I don't know. But uh, and I'm just trying to get off them as soon as possible. I'm using ice. I'm iced, iced baby. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> but I'm iced all the time because I'm trying to minimize my use of these medications because I'm at high risk for ulcers and stuff. So doctors prescribed physical therapy and aspirin. I was in physical therapy two times a week from January 2021 to September. Um, and that's when my prescription ran out. So, and I actually had it renewed twice during that period uh, because the pain in my knee in particular persisted and wasn't getting better, even though obviously other parts were getting much better. Like I got my butt back because of all the, the squats and lunges. That's awesome. But I can only do so many of those if I have knee issues. So <laughs> I was working out with a personal trainer about about one or two times a week for a while there too. Not that whole period because that's expensive, but you know, for a little while just to kind of um, learn some supplementary exercises that I could do to increase my odds of not needing surgery. So when the final limit on the physical therapy was reached, I went back to the doctor. And so that was last month. I had an MRI of my knee and it indicated that, that there was more than arthritis going on and that I was a candidate for surgery and I should just do it. I had the option of saying no, by the way, and uh, he had an opening and I just went for it because I was like, am I the kind of glutton of punishment that wants to glutton for punishment that wants to try to recover from surgery without pain pills or at least without pain pills for very long and launch a new website <laughs> and launch an affiliate program all, all at the same time? And the answer is yes, clearly. So um, anyway, because I'd been doing the work for nine months of physical therapy, the doctor shortlisted me for surgery and praised me a lot for being highly motivated. And I, I think he even did that um, when Nigel was around. Uh, were you were you there, honey, when he was talking about you're you're highly motivated? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pain is a great motivator. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> like it's not like I'm like Shira or something. I just I would like to walk without having horrible pain and having to sit down. Um. So luxury. What's that? When I luxury. When I were a lad, <laughs> we had to get up at ten o'clock at night, half an hour before we went to bed, eat a lump of cold poison, work twenty six hours a day down the mill, and pay mill owner permission. And when we got home, our dad would kill us and dance about on our grave, singing hallelujah. <laughs> try telling the kids of today that, and they won't believe you. For Yorkshireman sketch. I love you. Well, you, <laughs> you are hilarious and adorable. Okay. Oh, anyway, yes. Well, you seed. Um, and here's more about the surgery and what caused the issue. So here's the nifty image show and tell. So I'm going to go back to boop. Okay. So nifty image. Off here. Again, there's nothing. There's nothing gruesome in any of these images. There's no blood or anything. So if you're squeamish. Just think of it as a peach bottom or 
Actually, it does look vaguely naughty, but just just think just think of it as like an elbow or a knee because that's what it is. But it's it's not that gross, I promise. Um, so I don't know actually what I'm looking at in most of these photos. <laughs> the doctor went through all of them painstakingly, but like at at, at a very um, very 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 fast speed. And so I don't, and I'm not really that that well versed in in hardcore knee. Uh, anatomy and physiology. So all I know is that, okay, the best one that I remember is he showed me the little jagged tooth-like edge that was on my cartilage because my cartilage was wearing down kind of unevenly. So what he ultimately found out was this one here, which is, this is like a band of scar tissue that was holding my knee in the wrong position. So basically, I had this band, I thought it was a problem with my, my ligament or something, but no, it was like this band of scar tissue that had formed on um, the outside of my knee, which is not where I thought the problem was. I thought it was on the inside because um, I was kind of walking like, like my, it's hard to, to, to describe, but my knee was kind of going like, here's my thigh and here's my calf and there's my foot. It was kind of going outside, you know? I don't know. I don't know. I wish I knew medicine words better so I could describe this better. Um, if it, this were wig stuff, I'd be fantastic at it. But anyway, um, they it, apparently they thought it was just the arthritis and that jagged little bit of cartilage that needed to be smoothed down, which was also really jagged in other places that needed to be smoothed down. But then when they got in there, they saw that scar tissue and he had to remove that. And it unlocked my knee, which is something that I hadn't experienced in a very long time. So I feel very weird when I walk. It's not it's not that it's like super painful. I mainly feel like a newborn calf <laughs> because my knee is like, holy hell, what is this? <laughs> like, what is going on? Like, my knee is just like, Brr. it just does not want to... Uh, to adjust. And so I don't know if any of you had that sensation or if you've had knee surgery or anything like that, but it's like, I was sprained my ankles before and usually it's just pain, but this is, my, my knee is tracking completely differently when I walk and it's like a completely foreign sensation. Sometimes it's like, I, I can't even register mentally that I made a step and that's without pain meds in my system. And with it being like raw, it's, it's just like, I have to teach it to, to, to figure out what it's doing. So I start physical therapy um, next next week. Um, so I am on top of that. So now that that's done, I want to also say this, that we are all beautiful at any size because I'm going to talk about my weight in a moment. Um, and I want to say that weight issues, in my opinion, shouldn't be about aesthetics or morality. So please don't fat shame people, including yourself, okay? Seriously, I wouldn't, I, w I tell Nigel when he says nasty things about himself, I'm like, I'm not gonna let people bully you, not even you, right? So don't know that, I'm <laughs> say that to yourself, right? That you're not gonna let people bully you, even you. And uh, I can attest from personal experience that being fat shame never motiv me to, motivated me to change. It only, only made me feel bad. Like I remember one time on my 10th birthday and I swear to you, every single person that grew up as a fat child has stories like this, every one of them. Um, when I was 10, you know, I was probably like 50, 60 pounds overweight, which is it's pretty significant when you're like a little shorty. Um, and my mom was taking me out for dinner on my birthday and we walked past a table with this very fit, you know, blonde. I remember she was very blonde and very skinny and very pretty. But when we walked by, she basically hissed to the person next to her, kill me if I ever get that big. And I probably didn't weigh that much more than her. I was just short because I was, you know. 10. And that basically ruined my birthday. And I remember that. So how is that helpful? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, how is that? How is that contributing? And that's why I, it doesn't surprise me, by the way, that the internet turns sour. Because back then, people would say that stuff out loud. Now they just save it for the internet. Anyway, I digress. Our whole culture has a really dysfunctional relationship with food. So I think it's a little bit much to ask individual people to shoulder that burden by themselves. Um, Coming up on the screen, my sweet. Oh, let me let me fix that. Boop, boop, boop. There, there we, go. we go. Hooray! And so I think that treating fat people like they're the problem is also a big part of that social dysfunction. I experienced a lot of this when I was in England, and even though I was already losing weight, I found it so 
caustic the way that they talk about obesity in England because they, you know, because of the NHS, I assume, they basically try to shame people into this. I remember that one show with that Jillian Michaels lady who used to smell oh, Jillian. Oh. food and tell them they should change their diets. That's so messed up. Right? That, so that, that it's Jillian McKeith. That's who. Uh, but I mean horrible, why horrible. Is she, why is she smelling people's poo? Oh God. I don't know. The the point That's the, real. The thing oh is, she's God. horrible, she's nasty. Oh uh, my she, God. And she is a complete and utter quack. Like, I like she, okay, let, let, let me tell you something about Jillian oh McKeith. She would, she would talk about how it would be important to eat orange foods. Not because there was not because of anything about uh, they contain beta carotene, which does this, this, and that for your body and helps you do this, this, and that. And no, she'd say because the a vibrational what? energy level of orange, the 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 the, the bullshit bullshit. Does waffle. she eat essential oils? <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised, but the point is she's been totally discredited. And the one time, the only time I've ever approved of I'm a celebrity when get me out of here is when they basically uh, ran her off the air because she she's a bully, she's a quack, and Dude. she did not deserve to be on the air. Yeah, we should we should we should exercise that demon. It's yeah. exercise. Good okay, move on. rant over, rant Ooh. over. But what you said about the the, the the NHS demonizing obesity and all that sort of thing. I spent five years trying to convince the doctors I was getting arthritis. And they said, no, you're fat. It's gout. Have a blood test. Take some pain pills and go away. So yeah. I did. And it was never gout. It was arthritis. But they were hardline obesity epidemic. Uh, but they're not that much better over here, honestly, because... You know, I would be lying if I didn't admit that part of the reason why I really wanted to lose weight was because of this issue, was because of the fact that when I went to the doctor, the only thing they would tell me is that I'm fat. I literally had an endocrinologist who has since lost her medical license, not because of this, but because she probably did this to the wrong person who was not me. I walked away simpering, basically, <laughs> but um, or whim whimpering, but uh, I had the, she, this lady, okay. She was, she was, uh, I, I don't actually know where she was from, but she was very prejudiced against Americans because she instantly made this like, all Americans are fat. All Americans need to stop eating so much. When she was telling me that I was pre-diabetic, basically, this is how I found out that I was pre-diabetic. And I was like, well, what do I do about it? And she was like, and I was like, what, what is that gesture? And she was like, push yourself away from the table. And I was like, That's why men are severely lacking. Oh, oh my. <laughs> I was like, I need to get a new endocrinologist. That was the only, that was the second appointment. And it was, it was when she gave the first time, it was just an introduction. And that time she said that and I was done. But I mean, seriously, how can fat people expect to be responsible for their health and, and to try to do their best? Like, Okay, what if somebody's addicted to something? You're not going to assume that that addiction is going to preclude them from getting some kind of medical treatment for other illnesses that may or may not be related to it, right? But for some reason, if someone's addicted to food, they'll do that. And food addiction is very hard. And some people just have messed up metabolisms. Like, I am also in that boat. So it's... It's so it's so wrong that that's all people see sometimes. So I'm just going to get through these points because it's all kind of negative and I want to move on from it. But um, I do want to say that it is, I'm going to put this back on the screen. And boop. Okay. So treating fat people like they're the problem is a big part of that social dysfunction. I don't think it's cool to demonize people based on their appearance, even if it's couched in concerns about people's health. And this is this is real. And I want to say this because multiple things can be true at once. Fat shaming is mean and counterproductive. A lot of people use concerns about health as a means of delivering fat shaming con comments. And there are ways to approach the subject from a health-based standpoint. But the second point that I made that so many people kind of frame their criticism as if it's for your benefit, which is really messed up. <laughs> and it's really transparent when people do it. It's very insulting. Um, it's such a common thing that it makes it impossible to address health-related weight issues, even tactfully, without expressing genuine empathy first. So that's why I wanted to make sure that because I'm going to say some deep stuff about my, my own weight in a moment, 
that I say this stuff first. Plus, when you're heavy, too many conversations revolve around your weight full stop. People don't see you, they just see your size. It's like the bigger you are, the more invisible you become. So because of all these things and more, it's worth the extra time and effort to try to hear and understand someone before you give them advice about how to lose weight or improve their health, because chances are, if you're a good listener and they really care, they will open that dialogue when they're ready and they'll come to you. So just don't force it, be open to it. And make sure the person knows you're open to it, but leave it at that, let them come to you. I needed to say that because there is no sugarcoating the other big truth here. Being 100 plus pounds, overweight most of my life wrecked my ankles feet and knees and it's precisely because i was fit and fat i was always an active overweight person really i would go for walks regularly i was i'm a roller skater cardio wise i'm aces my joints on the other hand are a different story altogether so in my opinion, you cannot exercise your way out of a bad diet. I have a sample size, convenient sample of one, <laughs> but you know, I have to assume this is true for, for other people, you know, or at least some people. So it's worth saying, um, that is what I tried to do. And I think that's probably why I'm in this boat because I've never experienced any real injury to this knee that would justify getting that kind of scar tissue that would literally be holding my knee completely out of alignment. And so, you know, I would understand if I'd like broken it or had some trauma to it, but nothing like that. But what I have done is I have sprained my right ankle many, many, many times. And that puts a lot of pressure on that left knee. And I bet that that because of those two factors and they were both related to my weight. So you can be beautiful at any size. And I believe that in my heart of hearts to be true, you know? Um, I, and that's why I never felt embarrassed putting myself out here on YouTube, even when I was bigger, because it, it big people can be pretty too. But you can't be healthy at any size indefinitely. And I think that that is the qualifier that, that I wanted to make sure I was sensitive about and why I gave that disclaimer. I think people can be healthy at any size for a while. Cardiovascularly, they could probably stay healthy at any size for a really long time. But as far as your joint health goes, I think that's a completely different story. And I learned that the hard way. And I wanted to make sure I said something about it. So at some point it catches up with you and I am proof of this. But I wanted to remind you that there's always hope that it's worth investing in your health. It's worth putting up with the doctors and their stupid comments and finding good ones. I know all that stuff is really daunting and time consuming and expensive in the United States. Oh my God. <laughs> and my insurance premiums, by the way, like everything in my insurance plan doubled. Um, in, in the COVID pandemic. So um, be on the lookout. Some of you may, may see your insurance rates go up a lot too. Um, I do want to remind you though that that is still worth it. Don't let that be a deterrent. Make it a goal to make sure that you take care of yourself because this stuff, particularly with your joints and stuff, only gets worse over time. And so just keep at it. And know that you're not alone and you will never receive any judgment from me about your weight or unsolicited dieting advice unless it's something where i'm announcing from the rooftops i'm going to be talking about my diet right i usually put that like in the thumbnail or in the description if that's going to be a topic um i'm just happy that we can hang out with each other and frankly i i meant it what i said earlier about i think people can be beautiful at any age any size to to me i, I always like that one clark gable quote that i'm going to completely butcher nigel and i'm going to put you on the screen because it's been a while since we've seen your beautiful face are you over there did you run away? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> awesome. But yeah, I, I, um, there's this Clark Gable quote that, that I will butcher, but he's basically like, you know, I've met glamorous brunettes and glamorous women with gray hair and glamorous women, you know, with brunette hair. It doesn't matter age, blah, blah, blah. It has nothing to do with glamor, you know? And I believe that I, I believe that, you know, it's how you carry yourself matters mo more than anything. And so, uh, you know, I hope that when we do launch an affiliate program on Black Friday, that um, we have people who are bigger than me and smaller than me and everything in between. You know, I, I hope that people who have weird head shapes and stuff and have problems getting their wigs to fit will we'll, we'll make reviews of my stuff on social media, because if they do that, then, it, you know, hopefully it will show other people who may not know of any other people online that look like them. Hey, this is what I might look like which is the next best thing to getting it yourself and trying it on, which is really hard to do inexpensively online. So <laughs> I'll let you take over some of the comments I need to pause for. 
Well, I've got some diet lemonade here. So All righty. All righty. Let's see. I just had to figure out where we left off here. Um, Julie asked, they seriously have skunk spray jelly bellies? Well, they used to. <laughs> uh, part of the bean boozled thing where they did like 20 flavors and only 10 colors. So you didn't know if you were getting, say, chocolate pudding or dog food, which actually tasted kind of like beef stew. Or if you, or if you got uh, coconut or baby wipes sort of thing. And um, yeah, they weren't that bad. We got a hello. Hi. Hello. Let's see what else we got here. Um, dum, 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 dum. Phyllis Devine says, hey, everyone. Enjoy the live chat. Hello, Phyllis. Tina says, when I broke my arm, I took a picture of my x-ray after surgery. Oh, that sounds like fun. I was stoked. I didn't expect the doctor actually give me the evidence. I was like, oh, yeah. hey, that's cool. I'm, I don't know exactly what I'm looking at. It all kind of looks like chicken cutlets or something, but well, whatever. The amount, the amount you're paying for it is. <laughs> Look at these pictures. Most expensive ones ever. <laughs> that Sasha is glorious, is Faye Ray. Thank you. I, I, I know that... If I put it in the thumbnail, I should wear it in the video, but I was like, nah, I'm not getting dressed up, but I still want to show this wig off because it looks, to me, it looked like Downton Abbey. That's why I paired it with that uh, that that necklace and the kind of velvety boho Edwardian thing. I, I thought it kind of had that vibe. Lots lots of laughter for the for the schlinked in uh, <laughs> thing you read. No we'll do it in a moment. Folks. Uh, Fairy says, narcotic itches are so awful. I have them from Norco because I use because due to my neck surgery, can't take NSAIDs. Oh, That's yeah. Terrible. This this has been my constant companion because <laughs> I freaking I get itchy everywhere. It's terrible. Uh, let's see. Oh, and she says, good for you, Heather. It's so empowering to do the thing, especially if it means being down for a bit. You rock. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, oh, here we go. Let's see. Oh, it moved again. Uh, Anne <laughs> says, if you don't mind disclosing, who is your doctor? My husband is an ortho PA and he keeps asking who did the surgery. He's finding this far more interesting than the wig talk. Oh, well, I'm, I'm glad that he, he likes this stuff. We, we like nerd stuff and medical stuff and weirdness. Oh, yeah. Um, this was Dr. Logan K. Fields. I, it's no secret that I'm from Athens, Georgia area. So I went to uh, Athens Orthopedic Clinic. And they're very well known. They're very well regarded. People come from all over the South um, to go to that clinic. And I think they have one that's in Atlanta as well. Mm. Jody says, those pics look like my knee. I'm full of arthritis and need to have it replaced. Oh, well, I hope, yeah. you, I, I hope you get that done without complication because, no, that's... that's I, my dad and black. my mom have both had knee replacements. And they said, my mom in particular said that it took a while for hers to get better. But when it did, she was she's still a speed roller skater and all that stuff. Mm. So that, that's fantastic. At least she got her mobility back and then some. Well, Kathleen asked Faye about her neck surgery and uh, says, thank you for asking. I see my surgeon next Friday. And although I'm a bit pissy about my neck scar, I'm doing better for having it done. I'm making a bracelet from my old hardware. Outstanding. You should embrace it like dudes do. Cause like, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but guys will literally tell stories about their scars and brag. I feel like we should we should do that too. Cause why not? I like the whole mentality that they're like battle scars, you know, or like, I like that saying that they tell women who, um, you know, uh, uh, get a lot of uh, stretch marks that those are their tiger stripes or something like that. I'm like, oh, that's so, that's so cool. I love that stuff. Oh man, let's see how we're getting down here now. Um, da, 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 da. Oh yeah, by BMI, my spouse is obese, but he is short and extremely muscular, so it's by Well, going by BMI, Arnold Schwarzenegger at his peak was classified as obese, so I think that really needs to be um, looked at and reevaluated. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, why does everyone think someone else's weight is their business, says Daphne? Damn fine question. And it's almost always women, right? Like as in the people who are getting like mentally weighed. <laughs> like I don't know how many people actually sit in there and go, that, that dad bod in anything other than like generally endearing ways, you know? And when, when they talk about women, it's always like, oh, she let herself go. Like it's so negative. 
I, so I, I keep thinking back. To, I keep thinking back to the um, the ballad from the great Sir Mix a Lot. <laughs> oh my God, Becky, look at her butt! It is so big. I was stoked to get some butt back. I was actually stoked to have a little bit of a weight rebound because, I mean, filler is expensive, and I felt like I looked, like, a little bit sunken-faced and, and sullen and, frankly, very resting bitch facey. <laughs> because because I'd lost too much weight. Like, I, I don't feel comfortable being too, too little. I just want to be healthy, you know? Oh. Kathleen Simmons says, I just got done making homemade spaghetti noodles. That sounds we, I don't know we, if I've we, ever made homemade pasta. Have you ever tried that? No, no, no. But mm. uh, we, we've got a nice pot roast going in our uh, new-ish um, slow cooker. So that's going to be fun at 8 o'clock. Siobhan says, I am so late. Hiya. Hiya. <laughs> don't worry about it. We're glad you could join us. Ah, this is good. I completely agree, Heather. I'm 235 pounds with hardly no bio hair. I'm a makeup junkie, though, and when I beat my face and slap my wig on, I feel gorgeous. You are gorgeous. Look so. at you. you have an amazing smile. All right, where are we here? Uh, Jamie says, when I was a certain weight after my baby, I felt awful. I mm -hmm. gained even more weight, and now I'm that weight again, and I feel awesome. It's all in my head. Yes. Absolutely. Guarantee. And sometimes, true. sometimes just, you know, turning it out and putting yourself together for the day, even if it's a little overdressed for whatever you're going to do, helps a lot too. I don't know about you, but when I spiff up, like right now, obviously I'm dressing down intentionally because I just had surgery, whatever. I'm, I'm not that uptight about it. But when I do my makeup, usually on Saturdays, I feel like a million bucks. Yeah. It's, it's just fun to do it. And it's fun to see the results. It's Specifically, if you achieve something you've never done before, like a really good blend, or you magically got glitter onto your lid, but not onto your cheeks, like a wizard. <laughs> or you actually freehand drew a perfect cat's eye and didn't have to correct it, or keep drawing it bigger because you didn't want to have to correct it. <laughs> oh, true stuff here. Nearly, nearly done with the comments. Nearly caught up, my sweet. Tina says, my brother and my aunt have both had back surgery. Is that like recent? In which case, I hope they get better or historical. As in, I hope they're all healed now. Yeah, so, definitely. Anne says, that's great. He works for Athens Ortho. He said, glad you had a good outcome. Yes, it's a great it a, job. It's a very job. nice place. It's a very nice place. And those, those squidgy, bouncy ball chairs that they have. I totally want one of the chairs that they have in the, the waiting room lobby. Definitely. I say that literally every time I go. <laughs> Oh, so it's a Downton Abbey wig. Question yeah, if you look at the thumbnail when the replay starts. I that's our Sasha. She's she's not styled. I just kind of finger combed her a little bit, and she to me she looks like a, a hairstyle from Downton Abbey. That's the difference between her and some of the other short curly ones I made. She's got a little bit more of like a Edwardian vibe on purpose. So I love that stuff. Rhonda says I just had surgery on my shoulder. Well, hope you recover mm -hmm. from that nicely. Need another on the other shoulder, but I'm not sure. And I started carnivore. Itchiness on my skin has improved, and I've lost 15 pounds. That's excellent to hear. That's awesome. That's excellent to hear. So it's one of those diet things that improves your health. That helps. Ooh, Kathleen says, I have degenerative disc disease of the spine, torn Ooh. ligaments in hips, and in carpal tunnel. They've all gotten so bad, I'm in pain daily. Broken stomach and constantly nauseous. Oh, oh man. Oh, my goodness. That sounds oh like an ordeal. Ugh. I mean, I, I imagine that just dealing with the pain management component of all of that is daunting. Yeah. I bet that's a constant juggling act. So, my goodness. I, we, goodness gracious. Like, how do you even respond to that? I wish I could give you a hug. <laughs> oh, it jumped again. Where are we going here? Ah, I do the thing of trying to make myself up with hair and makeup. Um, I, I do. Yeah. I do love the purple hair in your profile photo. Yeah. Oh, okay. And Tina says the the back surgeries were historical. Okay. Well, so they're they're long recovered now. That's good to hear. Well, Alrighty, I think we're caught up. 
Yes. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of that. Thank you for listening to me while I shared all of that and my weird pictures. And I'm going to go ahead and move back to our little slideshow because I got another one of these funny things to read from Schlinkton. I just want to show you this cute little thing I made in Canva earlier because it's a cute little moon kitty. All right, honey. Are you coming back? Are you still here? No, no. I was, I was, uh, I was going to let you take the... I'm going to read another one of those Schlinkton things. Yeah, that's fine. But I want to see your reaction. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Yay. Thank you. Okay, here we go. This is another one of those uh, story times about adversity on LinkedIn. Story, or wait, was this the one that I read earlier? Yes, it was. Okay, hold on. <laughs> okay. Story time. When I was young and beautiful, I lived in your basement. We had to fit, we had to fight to survive. I once saw three pigeons fighting over a human finger. Ah, uh, memories. Well, something even worse happened to me. One day when I was planting trees in the Sahara, a horde of small mangrove crabs managed to seize my arm and verbally berated me for hours. I was left extremely lumpy and aggressive. But I didn't whine or complain. I didn't even call the authorities for assistance. Instead, I figured this would be a good chance to ask a horde of small mangrove crabs. When was the last time you were hugged? That's when I learned to cook. When you are faced with hashtag adversity, you need to diversity. <laughs> it literally says, when you are faced with hashtag adversity, you need to diversity. It's the only way to learn. Thanks to my challenges and my willingness to power through them, I am now CEO of my own company that I invented. You can do the same too. You just have to believe. Thank you. Hashtag business. Hashtag dairy free. Dairy free. What the? Yeah. <laughs> it's to me. It sounds. It sounds a little bit like it could be a Tom Waits song. <laughs> <laughs> it does kind of yeah the, the, the thing it got me most was mangrove crabs because i like mangrove crabs they're kind of cute but uh just a horde of mangrove crabs in the sahara yeah oh no and you can kind of see what the template for the bot is right yeah. i've repeated a couple of them you can kind of see what its template is that it's using you can kind of see how it's inserting words you can kind of see that they sound like Mad Libs because bots don't understand what the words actually mean. Yes. People are still training it, which means it's delicious. Yes. Kathleen says, oh, sorry. I was gonna say, Kathleen says, I do not take opioids anymore because of the side effects, so I'll yeah. just deal with it. Yeah, that they uh, when I was when they were trying when they were trying to convince me that I was uh, suffering from gout and not arthritis, they put me on opioids for a while and. As soon as I found out how addictive they were, I quit cold turkey. And yeah, that's 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 not a fun thing to do. Well, I would like. Oh, sorry. Okay, Gina says I'm so late. Hate to miss the party. How are you, Heather? Looking good. Hello, Nigel. Hello, Gina. I'm doing well, Gina. I had surgery to repair something I didn't even know was wrong with my knee. I basically had some some scar tissue that needed to be removed. Here we thought that it was just muscle weakness, and it was something else entirely. <laughs> Oh, yes. Here we go. Uh, where are we here? It moved again. Tina says, I would like a Moon Kitty sticker for my new car. We need to do something like that for merch, I think. Yes. It'd be cute. Because, I mean, I could, I could frankly turn turn the partner program on probably on this channel and uh, for, on Sister Wigs 2 and on um, the Classics channel. I qualify now on all three channels. The, the problem, though, is that, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I want to monetize them, even though I might as well at this point, because YouTube is monetizing them and showing ads, whether I like it or not. You guys can be in on that if you like. I, I, I'm still kind of like on the fence about it, but I could throw merch up on all three channels potentially and kind of play around with designs. We're working with a, a marketing team now, so they could probably help uh, come up with some designs. It might be cute. Yeah. Speaking of that, they got me flowers. Oh, that's, yeah, the flowers from the marketing team. That's it was great. so very kind of them. I was not expecting that. So next time I see them uh, remotely via webinar, I'm going to make a big fuss over them. <laughs> yeah, so yellow roses and Peruvian lilies. It's very lovely. Barbara says, I guess I need to pull myself up by my bootstraps and diversity, and then I'll be okay. <laughs> yes, yes, because it's very linked in. 
Uh, yeah, I'm gonna read read one more, honey. Okay. 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 No, one more. I've been trying to get you to let me Sorry. read. Sorry. Right. Okay. Go. <laughs> okay. Here we go. No, I want to see your reactions. Okay. Like, why are you so? Do you need to go to the bathroom or something? No. no okay. No, no, no. Okay. I just want to give you all the attention. Aw, I love you. But no, I like your face. So, okay, here's another one. <clears throat> Remember, this is a LinkedIn adversity quote or one made by a bot that is supposed to motivate you. Okay, story time. When I was pretty kitty, I lived at a prep school where I was all state in lacrosse. We had to fight to survive. I once captured two rabbits and wore them like earmuffs just to survive the winter. I don't possibly see how this is relevant to anything, you exclaim. Well, something even worse happened to me. One day, when I was repainting my local church, a hard-boiled private detective managed to tickle me senseless. I was left extremely distressed. But I didn't whine or complain. I didn't even bandage up my wounds. <laughs> Instead, I figured this would be a good chance to ask a hard-boiled private detective, sure, you may be able to defeat me, but can you defeat your own business challenges? That's when I learned to offset the mental effects of frequent 60 hour work weeks by offering employees free access to an app where a white guy talks to you about meditation for 30 minutes. When you are faced with hashtag adversity, you need to lasso it and hog tie it. It's the only way to learn. Thanks to my challenges and my willingness to power through them, I am now paying off student loans for the foreseeable future. You can do the same. You just have to believe. Thank you. Hashtag brave. Hashtag I am brave. Hashtag bravery. Hashtag courage. <laughs> I am not paying off student loans for this foreseeable future. Truth. Too close to reality. <laughs> Too close to, and pretty kitty. I, when I hit that one this morning, I started cackling. That was—I yes. think it might have been the one that woke you up. No, no, it was, it was, it was the first one. Uh, but <laughs> the first one that you read was the one that woke me up. But it was good. Oh, Kathleen says the marketing people are doing a great job. Thank you. Yeah. They've been lovely to work with, um, which which has been very refreshing. And the guy who who is heading the team, he's like a veteran. And he's he's like just freaky smart and good at organization. <laughs> I I I am in awe. It's very cool. Good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You have any more you want to go through, or should I go on to the Patreon part of this presentation? Uh, let's go. Oh, Gina says I'm very motivated. Right. Right? Oh, I've got one more too. And I'll read it when I'm done with this next um, little segment. Cause I want to talk a little bit about some of our patron perks on Patreon. Um, uh, Cause I moved them around and a lot of, a lot of you guys are actually my patrons as well. So I want, or our patrons cause Nigel's part of the Patreon too. He's actually answering a lot of questions on behalf of both of us. And he's checking the messages on my behalf for both of us. Cause right now I'm between recovery yeah. from this and designing that new site. I am like, very much in the weeds. <laughs> what were you going to say, honey? I was going to say you're swamped. For sure. For sure. I, I definitely overextended myself. I have a very bad habit of doing that. Mea culpa. Um, but yeah, anyway, I also took it upon myself uh, to finally do something that I've been thinking of doing for months, which um, was going through some of the Patreon perks and the program itself and tweaking it because I felt like there were some things that I said that I was going to do that just didn't make sense or that there wasn't a whole lot of interest in me providing. And I was like, well, what are some other things that I can do a little differently? And so I kept polling my patrons and I figured I might as well just let everybody know what went on there. So I've got updates. For example, I wanted everyone, regardless of tier, to get recognition in the credits equally. So you've probably noticed that at the end of the live streams, uh, we run the patron reel. That's literally all the patrons. Um, regardless of their tier. I felt like it was almost kind of snooty <laughs> of me to uh, position it the way that I had. I don't think I actually heard that criticism from any, anybody. It was just me. And I just kind of was like, oh, I don't know if I like that. I want to give everybody a little bit of credit. So I warned everybody so they could change their handles or, or opt out if they weren't interested and nobody seemed to contest it. So I just went ahead and uh, put everybody's names up there. But 
there, there are some other things that I did as well. And it was mainly because uh, I wanted to kind of shift my focus to things that I knew I could deliver on time, no matter how overextended I got. And I also would like to continue to um, double down, triple down, quadruple down on this collaborative aspect of what we're doing at Sister Wigs. I think that it's different. I think it's really, really novel. I think that if I were a wig buyer, I think it would be really, really super cool to have a say in the kind of things that get made and how they're marketed and how we present them on the site and things like that. And those are the things I'm constantly polling about and, and asking for feedback on. And hopefully I demonstrate, you know, over time, maybe not immediately, that uh, I, we do put in a good faith effort to try to make a lot of those things happen. Like for example, when I came out with, um, which one was it? Oh, I believe it was the uh, prismatic ebony. And prior to the prismatic ebony, it was stuff like the, um, uh, opal brown that we did with bell Tress and raspberry cocoa frappe. People kept asking for really interesting colors, but for blondes, which is why we made the holographic blonde. Um, but anyway, uh, back to Patreon. I uh, changed the goal of the group. I want to set a, a kind of a goal for, um, you know, it could either be a monetary goal or it could be like how many patrons we want or both. And I wanted to make it a community-based goal. So I want to try to get to 250 patrons by the end of next year, any tier, doesn't matter to me. Um, I just think that that would be a really cool way to keep it progressing. And I think when I reach 250 patrons, an idea that I, I think Nigel and I would have a lot of fun with, and John too, um, uh, when, when he uh, rejoins us next week or whenever we meet this goal, which probably won't be next week, but whatever. Uh, when I reach 250 patrons, I wanna collaborate. Um, through a series, like we'll make it like a process and a project and we will involve each other and we will develop a wig color together. I thought that'd be really cool. Now, not everyone's gonna want a gray or a brown or a red, but we'll go with the majority, okay, of whoever it is. That's why I kind of want a, a slightly bigger group to do it because I think that, that then we'll get um, a, a much better sample size, I guess and um, be able to pull and get really meaningful information back. Right now we've got uh, fewer than a hundred, which to me is better better than a super small sample size that some of you know medical trials and stuff try to get away with. But I would still rather get more people involved. I've taken lots of classes in statistics and dem dem um, uh, demographics and things like that as part of my degree program. So I know a slightly bigger sample size is probably better. And that will ensure that whatever we make collaboratively together will actually sell. <laughs> so, but if you think that's a cool idea, just know that I set that as the community goal and did away with the monetary goal because it doesn't matter to me what tier people sign up at. Well, Faith says it sounds fun. Yay! I was hoping that would sound like a cool idea. So, um, again, that's where we're at. So, one big perk of what we've been doing um, for probably like the last six months is that we've transitioned the videos that we link to, with the exception of the live streams. Because I want I want to encourage people to join the chat, and we've tested the, the limits. I think of Vimeo's chat functionality for this sort of thing. It's much better being um, on YouTube for the foreseeable future for that thing. But um, aside from the replays of these live streams, everything else is a Vimeo embed, and will continue to be when we start making more videos about our own products, ad free on uh, Patreon. So here are the tiers. So they're exactly the same with the exception of I added one to the higher tiers that can, is a commission tier. And I'll, I'll talk about that in a moment. But um, to the $2 tier, we added more stuff. So you get access to basic patron, patron feed. So that's the bulletin board and all the other comments. Um, any updates about the company, new color releases. I try to give advance notice. You can get that stuff for just two bucks a month. Um, and by the way, for any of these tiers, if you sign up for a full year, you get 10% off. So that's kind of cool. Um, you also get advanced access to content on the main YouTube channel as, as time permits. Um, let's see, uh, so, cause sometimes when I'm making the videos, I'm kind of like up against a hard deadline. And if I go a little over, I don't have much time to give advanced notice. So that's the caveat. But it, anytime I do have the opportunity to give advanced notice, I will continue to do so for content releases as well. Um, ad free videos, as I just mentioned, for more pleasant viewing experience and your name will be included in the patron role, as I mentioned earlier. So the next tier up, again, just five bucks a month, you get everything at that level. 
But um, you also get the new and archived commentaries on older videos as they are released. Um, what I what I like to do every once in a, in a while, um, as time permits, is I will watch an old video, one that I either got a lot of dislikes or got a lot of likes or a lot of comments, something where there was a lot of interest, and I'll go back to it. Um, like I think the first one I did was on Always by Raquel Welch. I do not like that wig. And I said so openly <laughs> in the video about it, right? So, um, that kind of thing I give commentary on and you get access to that at the $5 level. Um, Distinguish Enabler, and I'm gonna, I'm trying to speed through this because I don't wanna be boring and sales mini too much in here, but um, you get everything at those first two levels as well as access to information about new and upcoming products before their public debut. And you guys will get it um, at least, you know, in most cases, six to 12 hours advance notice. Um, my hope is to extend that window over time to give you more of an advance notice. But right now with so many projects up in the air, I, it's like a mad scramble just to get it to where it is. And I'm not afraid to admit that. Um, so let's see, uh, $15 level, get everything there. And you also get um, inclusion in polls. I'm gonna be polling a lot more. Um, and I'm going to, uh, instead of making that open to everybody in Patreon, it's going to be something that is going to be kind of a perk to this tier. Um, I haven't really done much of it though. So it's it's not like we're the, anybody's really gonna miss out that didn't see it before. Uh, I hadn't really done much of it before. Um, let's see. Uh, Cause most of it was just like open question format in videos, which literally everyone who is on Patreon can watch. Let's see. Um, then uh, occasional deep dives for the $20 tier. Um, you can see vlogs about the wig industry, social media, other parts of my day to day, not typically available to the public. So the more intimate videos that I make that are more like vloggy about the business, $20 and up will get access to that moving forward. I wanna, I wanna kind of limit that. So that way people have the option to opt out of that kind of content as well by just staying at the $15 tier. Um, Let's see, associate producers, exactly the same as before. They get the big name in the credits at the end. But I also want to just kind of put it out here that they, I do pay a little bit more attention to people who invest at the $50, $100, and, and we will have a $250 level. And the reason why is because they're investing a lot in me. Um, and I respect that because I know that, you know, there are other creators here on Patreon that, that I give money to. And, um, you know, I really respect what they do. And, you know, I, I'm also one of those people like I donate every year to Wikipedia and stuff like that. I mean, I am a, I'm a sucker every time they put that banner on Wikipedia that says, you know, if everyone just gave a dollar, I give 20, you know, it's like, I'm such a sucker for that. But uh, I really, really appreciate people who um, are on Patreon, period. And especially the folks that help make up kind of the windfall between like, what I make and and the opportunity costs we're essentially missing by my husband not being able to work right now. That's why he helps me out, point blank. I'm just gonna put it out there, honestly, and I've said it before, we're still waiting for Nigel's green card, so he can't he can't just go get a job, and I'm okay yeah. with that. I'm still annoyed by it though, because it's taking from bloody ever. Well, of course, honey, but you know what? That's just, that's what we signed up for. Yeah, true, but still. And we've got friends, and we're willing to work for it, you know what I mean? So. Yeah. It's just legally, I'm the one working for it, and he's just helping me. <laughs> I, I pay him personally to help me. It's an allowance, basically. But yeah, we, we are very, very grateful to all of you, and we want to make sure we're giving okay. you lots of stuff in return. I want to get through these other two tiers real quick, honey. So um, just basically the exact same stuff. At the $100 tier and above, we do have a couple people at that tier. If I make something that I know for a fact that you will really, really like, um, I, I would probably just send it to you. And I probably have in some cases because um, I just, I love doing that. And I, I still have yet, if AKGG is watching, I have still to yet, I've yet to make uh, a short gray wig or one that's like comfortably short, but I do remember that. And I will, I will be making that next year and we will definitely be sending you one. So don't, don't buy one. I will send you one for sure. I just wanted to put that in writing, but that is a perk. Um, and I added a new tier for one reason only. If you would like to basically order a video from me, so like let's say you just sign up for one month, you just bought yourself a video at this rate, right? So let's say you wanna see a really specific color video, you want me to showcase it in a really specific way, as long as it's not cost prohibitive, 
And as long as you give me time, a reasonable amount of time to do it, you can commission content from me. I'm perfectly happy to work for it. I like, I like making the videos. I plan to do more of it next year. And if there's a particular theme or thing you would like me to attempt, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily recommend ordering a very, very expert level um, styling video from me. That is really not my area of expertise. Um, but you know, if you just want me to do a styling video for laughs to see how I muddle through it, I'm, I'm game. Um, really, this is if you would like me to review a specific wig or do color comparisons, which um, you haven't seen or showcased in a specific manner. Um, and we can always discuss that if you're interested. But I thought, you know what, there might be some people who think that that's a really good exchange, you know? And uh, so there's that. And that's all I got. That's where you can find us on Patreon. And I'm going to let Nigel do more of the talking while I at least show the patron role since I've been mentioning all these fine folks. All right. Hey, Jody says that all sounds fabulous. Yay. <laughs> and uh, we'd love to see you do a wig similar to Aesthetica Spin. That style and some of your custom shade would be amaze balls. <laughs> they don't do custom colors. I have asked uh, Aesthetica, literally, I've asked almost every company I, I work with if they'll do a custom color with me. Um, but they will let me order colors that are not already being made. Um, so like, for example, if, one of my favorite colors is RT330, RT4. And if, you know, they don't make thin in that color, I could always commission that in that color, et cetera. Uh, Cheryl says, I have trouble finding Sister Wigs videos on Vimeo. I have a free account, so I don't know if anyone else is having trouble there. I think, I think the real issue is that when we're using StreamYard and when StreamYard taps into Vimeo, I think what it does is it just reuses the same generic thumbnail every time, which makes all of them look the same. So at some point, um, what I might have Nigel do maybe, or maybe uh, we can get Cliff in here, but he can go in after me and add the correct thumbnail because it's very confusing. Otherwise, they are there though. It's just, they all look like the same video with a mountain top for <laughs> a, a thumbnail. Hmm. All righty. Tina says, oops, I'll wait for this one to go. That's right. I'll make sure everybody gets their, gets their moment. Yeah. All, All right. right. Tina says, y'all would love one of the new stickers I got. It's kind of a take on Harry Potter. It says, I solemnly swear a lot. <laughs> you and me both, Tina, you and me both. <laughs> Those uh, words have been have been getting used a lot, particularly when I try to get in and out of chairs. So some of my favorite words right now. <laughs> yes. Faith says, I want to increase my tier. How do I do that? All right. Well, that's something that I actually don't know. Let me see if I can find a, a good article on this on Google for a second. Let me see. There might be something like that. Don't do. Go ahead and keep talking, honey. All right. Hey, Julie is amused by the Patreon level names. Thank you. I do, have to, give, Cheryl. Cheryl I do likes I have to give some of the credit to, um, who is it? Oh, oh, uh, counter contra points. Mm. Because, um, she's got some really, uh, funny names for her. So I, I, I do have to, sh to say, I, I borrowed generously from her creative genius. Okay. Lee over at, uh, contra points. Yeah. Kathleen Simmons says, these lives are so amazing. Thank you, Kathleen. I think, uh, Barbara, I, think I shared a, uh, a link, or I'm trying to share a link. Okay, sorry, let me undo I don't that. know if it will actually show up as a hyperlink, but. Okay, well, maybe you could, maybe you could uh, copy and paste it in the banners. Yeah, give, give me just a sec, because Faith asked a really good question and I yeah. about how do you change tiers, and I think I actually pulled this up on the screen. I'm not gonna go through this painstakingly, but I just kind of want to show you uh, what that link is, because they have like a little step-by-step -step document. Can you guys see it? Yes, there it is, says cool. editing your right. That's That's the link that I just shared, so you just copy and paste that in there, and it tells you how, how to do it, and it actually shows you. All see? right, good. Little helpful document there on their behalf. Uh, Barbara says, so many YouTube channels are going with the channel membership program administered by YouTube. Does Patreon work better for you? I, um, I mean, 
Okay. So when I say this, it's not a political statement at all, because I'm mainly like a political moderate and I strive very hard to be kind of a moderate in that regard. Um, I, I think that uh, the less control YouTube has over my creative property, the happier I feel about the situation. <laughs> Like uh, after 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 earlier this year, where you know, people abused the copyright system to try to destroy about eight years of my work. I realized that the, the less I do on YouTube, I mean, I consider YouTube a necessary evil. You know, mm. it's like there are no really viable alternatives. Like Vimeo, I've I've been really trying with Vimeo, but it, Vimeo has a lot of features that are really great for like one-on-one -on -one webinars and educational purposes, but it's not really great for this kind of thing. Um, it is a really great place to host my videos though. And so we've we've been doing that and anything that, that is like an edited static video will be redundantly posted over on Vimeo. Um, but let's see. And we've got over a thousand videos on, on Vimeo at the moment. I'm also on library. If you've heard of the library project, um, and you can view that via Odyssey as well, so we are we are cross-linking automatically there. You'll you'll if you are on either of those platforms, you'll notice that we'll we'll start to post more because it's synchronized with the main channel and not Sister Wigs too. Um, and let's see, uh, it's it's basically just that I'm I'm not really keen on making my entire or at least a, a significant portion of you know our our side income <laughs> coming from YouTube directly. Like, I don't want to be that dependent on them. And it's, it's just because I don't trust them. I, I came from a, a background in artificial intelligence. I am definitely a techno dystopian. <laughs> I definitely am, went from being a very hardcore techno utopian to a techno dystopian when I realized how a lot of these companies function. And a lot of the stuff that's been coming out in the news lately, people who work behind the scenes have known for a very long time. And I've been I've been telling people about this, and people just look at me like I'm a crazy killjoy. So the less the less I I, I have to put on YouTube, the better. Mm. Kathleen says I wore Danica and Lilac Honey R today, and multiple young people said they loved my hair. Yes, yay! And uh, yeah, this is in the, this is over here in over here in the uh, <laughs> chat section. It's like so, down. It's like down. Down here on the screen. Yeah, it's over here in the chat section, and now I've got it down here. But yeah, that 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 will help you find your editing your membership stuff. Awesome. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, da, 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 da. Jody says, Bettina, where'd you get that sticker? I would love one. I'm the queen of obscenities. Fuck yeah. Oh, here's one. Avril. Uh, random question. I observe an anachronistic tendency of wig purveyors to split based on race seems so weird. I love days. your vocabulary. Hold on. We have to acknowledge this vocabulary. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Go ahead. Yes. Seems so weird these days. An opportunity to market, to integrate your thoughts. Well, you've actually done a video I about did. that. I did a whole video on this, um, yeah. on the main channel over on sister wigs, main channel. Um, yeah. there is a whole video about, about the two different worlds and they are starting to overlap a little bit. I mean, yeah. honestly, they are like, if you, but if you only go, just very recently. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, because people were starting to notice and I was making videos about it like years ago because it was one of the things that really took me off guard. Yeah. You know, I guess it's kind of an extension of privilege to to not notice when the catalog is just full of people that look like me. Mm -hmm. And then when you realize that, you're like, oh, well, crap, clearly I'm being pandered to. Mm. <laughs> but, it, but it does serve a utilitarian purpose, even if superficially it looks real bad. And the utilitarian purpose is this. And, and it's the same reason why, okay, because I, I, I want to put this out there too. There's a, actually a lot of cultural diversity in the wig trade, period. And it's it's mostly off camera. Like, for example, like the Bobby Boss brand and, and a lot of like um, what you would consider like uh, wigs for women of color, they're, they're essentially, um, or people of color, let's be inclusive about this now, <laughs> right? Like, I think, I think people would be surprised to know that they're run by South Korean companies. And, you know, so they're not making the wigs for people that look like them. They're making wigs for, for an entirely different audience. So all the models, they have a completely different complexion than someone like I, I do because, you know, I sunburn very easily. <laughs> um, but I think, I think part of this, this is kind of like 
it's easier to kind of imagine what you would look like in a wig when you're looking at pictures of somebody who kind of looks like you. So even when Bobby Boss, or at least has a similar complexion, because the color of the hair is really difficult for some people um, because it can look really different on camera or it can look really different on certain skin tones, right? Like a really good example is I took a bunch of pictures of our Illuminati R and I'm using diverse complexions on our mannequins for our uh, upcoming website. So you can, act, I've actually been able to see the difference when we take a photo of that, that color in the non heat friendly fiber on um, like a, a really beauty, beautiful, like cafe au lait kind of skin complexion uh, versus someone who looks like me. It's like, it looks much ashier on somebody that looks like me. And it, it's much more high contrast on, on somebody else. And, and it actually like highlights like almost like Marilyn Monroe style. Like it highlights their complexion. They like glow. Um, and it's so pretty <laughs> in either case. It's just a different effect all from the same hair color because of how it's interacting with the, the mainly the undertones of people's uh, complexions. So long story short, the the wigs the wig brands i don't think deliberately segregate i don't think there's like a deliberate racial bias in all cases i know that there's probably one there i i know that um and i've mentioned this in that video too that i think that's part of the reason why medical wigs are are frankly overpriced in a lot of cases, um, though sometimes it's worth it, particularly if they have a lot of really fancy schmancy hand tied features, then we're dealing with the whole issue of like labor and human capital and stuff like that, um, which does inflate the wig price. But yeah, I'm I'm going on a on tangent. I'm repeating all the same points I already talked about in like a 40 minute video. So go ahead yeah, and check you can, out. You can find that video on, on Sister Absolutely, because it's on a, the main Sister Wigs channel you, and get really I, in depth. I definitely have a lot of thoughts on this. I, I have a degree in sociology, so I'm paying attention to this kind of stuff all the time. Um, and it's it's definitely something where when I joined this industry, I was frankly shocked that I it took that long for me to pick up on the bias. And then when I started really diving into it, it was fascinating, really. Mm. <laughs> sorry, for, sorry for going on a, going on a tangent about that. <laughs> That's all right. It was a question, and you answered it beautifully. Thank you. Kathleen Simmons says, I'm so thankful for all you two do. And we're thankful for you and all our other supporters, customers, and viewers. And we're okay. thankful that you are talking to us right now. These live streams would be super freaking boring if we were just sitting here talking to ourselves. We do that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Barbara says, I agree with the tech dystopia. Some days I feel like I'm living in a cross between the Matrix and the Handmaid's Tale. Oh, my God. Same. Let's, so let's throw some Black Mirror in there as well. Just for Oh, my God. That episode where the guy is on the spaceship and he falls in love with the girl who, who wants to be a singer. They ride the bikes all the time. Yes. Yeah. That, that is too the, real. It's too real. Or the one where people have, have, have the implants so that when people are blocked in social media, they actually appear as a gray, fuzzy blob in real life. <laughs> So you can't no. actually see reality anymore. Mm. No. Avril says, thank you. You're very welcome. Kathleen Ryan says, this was a fun and informative live stream. I love your new ideas and thoughts for your Patreon. Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. And Avril says, she will watch Fo Show. Awesome. Thank you. Let me know what you Excellent. think. Excellent. So, and even if you don't agree with me, that is totally cool too. Cause we yeah. had a, a very, oh, the comment section on that video is freaking fantastic we had women from all over the wiggo sphere from from you know oh, yeah. the the black part the white part and everybody in between part commenting and giving us their perspective it was very very cool in the comment section even when people were fighting with me it was awesome <laughs> oh yeah yeah good stuff all right here we got I, I saw i saw barbara's comment she said the first episode of black mirror the pm and the pig i yeah i tried to block that one from my memory <laughs> I didn't because it was disturbingly very similar to what was happening uh, with actual British Prime Minister David Cameron. I don't want to know more about this, I don't think. He's gone. Yes. Wish Boris Johnson would go as well, but that's me. Oh. <laughs> he, was, he, he was great when he was a host on uh, Have I Got News For You, but... Uh, I remember when we were in London last time and I was talking about Boris Boris Johnson becoming mayor of London. We talked to the cabbie. He said, oh, 
his <laughs> ideas are a pain in the neck. And that was that was when he was just the mayor, let alone uh, prime minister. But, he is yeah. witty, though. He's he's witty. He's, he's entertaining. Really he's quite charming in, in a Boris Johnson type way. <laughs> Very nice. Yes, but I don't think I, I. He's entertaining, but and and erudite, but I don't think he should be in power. As oh as my! Well. All right. Well, yeah. I think I think we need to to do at least one more of these schlinkdins before we go to kind of cleanse the palate of political and nightmare yeah. fuel. Okay. <laughs> All Let's right. Okay, so this is the very last of the hashtag. Um, uh, adversity posts. This is uh, again a, 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 a bot that's got some machine learning in it, um, and, and I assume a template or a macro involved. But it's it's basically a Mad Lib that's meant to be like um, <laughs> an, a LinkedIn motivational speech, basically. So here we go. But it's going to be completely goofy. <sighs> okay. When I was but a wee lad, I lived by a Dairy Queen in Secaucus, New Jersey. We had to fight to survive. Oh, this is a repeat. Sorry. No, it isn't. It's just repeating the same element. My bad. I once saw two pigeons fighting over a human finger. Um, okay, you wonder. Well, something even worse happened to me. One day when I was teaching entrepreneurs how to network, a savvy IT guy managed to evade all my taxes for me. <laughs> I was left extremely covered in a metaphorical soup of my own design. <laughs> But I didn't whine or complain. I didn't even fight back. Though I could have. You see, I'm a black belt in Krav Maga. And in my spare time, I teach it to children who don't have teeth for free. Krav Maga isn't about attacking. It's about self-defense. But sometimes self-defense is about attacking. So naturally, I didn't fight back like I said earlier. I did but I definitely know Krav Maga, please stop asking for demonstrations. I can't right now because I'm busy. All caps busy, by the way. Instead, I figured this would be a good chance to ask a savvy IT guy, what are your core brand values? That's when I learned to challenge my peers to become better workers, to dare them into greatness, to show them that marketing isn't just about selling a product. It's also about upselling additional features to existing clients. <laughs> when you are faced with hashtag adversity, you need to be strong. It's the only way to learn. Thanks to my challenges I, and my willingness to power through them, I am now a very proud viewer of every Super Bowl, Super Bowl ad. You could do the same too. You just have to believe. Thank you. Hashtag blessed. Wait, there is there is one more. There is one more. Okay. Huh. I just trained a lizard to teach me algebra because my school was overrun with moths. Story time. When I was an itty bitty little kid, I lived on the side of the road. We had to fight to survive. I once fought to survive. Ah, uh, memories. So, well, something even worse happened to me. One day when I was dancing with the stars, a 35-year-old suburban mom consumed by a white wine rage managed to invite me to 10 meetings in a single week. Oh, God, that sounds awful. 10 meetings in a week? I was left extremely covered in metaphorical spikes. But I didn't whine or complain. I didn't even stop spreadsheeting while it happened. Instead, I figured this would be a good chance to ask a 35-year-old suburban mom consumed by a white wine rage, what's your product's main value prop? That's when I learned to be a thought leader. When you're faced with hashtag adversity, you need to milk your business cows until you have enough business calcium. It's the only way to learn. Thanks to my challenges and my willingness to power through them, I am now lost in the Google basement. Please send help. It's very dark and people keep offering me two massages per quarter. You can do the same. You just have to believe. Thank you. Hashtag spicy takes. Hashtag memes. Outstanding. <laughs> I am now in the Google basement. Please send help. <laughs> offering me two massages for a quarter. <laughs> I don't know. I don't get any massages. So maybe that's an improvement. We should build that into our perks package. <laughs> well, not when, naughty when, style. I'm well, not like when your your knee is better. Yeah. My hands are better. We'll talk about it. <laughs>
Yay. All right. Okay. <laughs> I love I love that you guys are getting a kick out of these. Oh, so, they're an absolute blast. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching, everybody. We've hit the yes, nine minute you. mark. I'm going to try to unwind and get, gauge whether or not I actually need a pain pill. I kind of hope I don't because, as I mentioned, not not a big fan. Yeah. So uh, thank you for hanging out with us. Next week, I hope to make it up the stairs Yeah. and, and actually be in the same studio with Nigel and actually be all gussied up because all my stuff's up there. So <laughs> we'll, we'll see how it goes. I will keep you guys posted. So bye, everybody. See you, folks. Thank, thank you for hanging out with us.